Okay, so whose idea was it to chuck such a thick heat sink onto this SSD? Hello everyone and welcome to another video. The first rule of buying any storage device is to avoid buying used. Although I can't say that I've been following that rule to a T. I recently got a new laptop and although it came with a 2TB NVMe SSD, I wanted to get a secondary drive that I can use as a game drive. So I went on AliExpress and I bought this Fanshang SSD for 105 US dollars. I know, I know, you can just go on Amazon and buy a relatively known SSD for the same price. But I went for the Fanshang for two reasons. First and foremost, if you shop the sales on AliExpress, you can actually get this SSD for much cheaper. And secondly, if I got a known SSD, you wouldn't be watching this video. Anyways, as usual, it took 9 days for this drive to arrive from China into Canada, and although 9 days might not be the best, at least it's consistent and you don't have to deal with Canada Post. The SSD was well packaged and I didn't see any damage. We'll start with the basics, it's a 2TB drive, it's PCIe 4.0 and it's a TLC drive. So I knew that this SSD had a heatsink. What I didn't know though is that it's an abnormally thick heatsink. When I first saw it, my first thought was, oh, this is not gonna fit in the laptop. But I still disassembled the laptop, I looked into it, I tried to install it, and unsurprisingly, it didn't fit. This is fine though, I did a little bit of switcheroo, I installed another SSD into the laptop, it's also a Fanshang unit, we'll be making a video about that, it's a 4TB SSD, and the S660 I installed on my main computer. This ended up being good though, since we'll be able to test out the temperatures. Normally, a desktop computer will warm up less compared to a laptop, but the placement of the SSD slot on this desktop is going to allow the SSD to warm up. You see, the SSD slot is right by the graphics card, so I feel like the SSD is going to be one of the warmest components on this computer, even when it's idling. This way, we can test out the heatsink, and not only that, this motherboard came with a heatsink for the SSD, that I couldn't install because, well, the SSD is really thick, so we'll be able to compare the two as well. So the first test, it's not going to be objective by any means. I had another SSD installed on the computer that I had to remove, I then reconnected it to the computer with a USB adapter, and we're just going to copy some files from the old SSD to this Fanshang unit. We're not going to be able to test the maximum speed since the adapter is capped at 1GB per second, what we can test though is the dips. This SSD doesn't have a DRAM cache, instead we use some of the storage as cache, it's going to be faster than the rest of the storage, and when that cache fills, the SSD is going to take some time moving things around, and we'll see if that's going to have an effect on performance. As you can see, we were mostly able to hit the speed ceiling of 1GB per second, although we've had some dips here and there. So those dips, they happened when the cache was full and the SSD had to empty it out. In total, we copied around 300GB of data, so this is normal. Once again though, this isn't a perfect test since we're using a USB adapter for one of the SSDs and the file sizes differ greatly, so if there are a lot of small files that we need to copy or move, the speeds will naturally go down, but all in all, 300 gigabytes in total, we see a couple very obvious dips. The next test that I went for involved copying around 100 gigabytes of large files from one SSD to the other. In this test, we saw speeds at around 2.5 to 3 gigabytes per second, which is pretty good. In this test, it seems like we either didn't manage to fill up the cache, or the drive did a great job managing the writes and reads when the cache was full. I then wanted to check out the temperatures, and in a crystal disk mark test, the temperatures reached 68 degrees celsius. So much for that heatsink. Now I know the location of this SSD isn't ideal on my computer, but the SSD that I had before this, it didn't have a heatsink so I just used the built-in heatsink that came with the motherboard, and the temperatures then wouldn't go past 60 degrees. So it makes me question why they went for such a thick heatsink if it's not gonna do all that well. So if your motherboard comes with a heatsink for the SSDs, 
just don't waste your money on an SSD with a heatsink, since as you can see, it does much worse than a heatsink plus SSD plus a heatsink that's provided by the motherboard. With that, we can finally move on to Crystal Disk Mark. The rated speeds of this drive are 4800 megabyte per second for reads and 4200 for writes. Well, this might actually be the first time I get higher speeds than advertised on Crystal Disk Mark. We're getting 5200 megabytes in reads and 4950 megabytes in writes. Honestly, this is fine for an entry level PCIe 4.0 SSD. I know the biggest question you have in mind is the post sales support. AliExpress has a 90 day return period, and I honestly haven't had any issues with AliExpress. On the other hand, Fanshang offers a 5 year warranty, although I don't know who you would reach out to for support. I know they have a presence in Canada, but I'm not sure if they're gonna honor the warranty for a product that you bought from AliExpress. Either way, I tend to be optimistic about these things, so I know I would get support either from AliExpress or from the seller, but your mileage may vary. Overall, honestly, this is a decent entry-level NVMe SSD. The speeds are decent, the price is good, although the temperatures are a bit concerning. And the heatsink, it's gotta go. Thank you so much for watching, please consider liking this video, checking out my other videos, and subscribing to my channel. Take care.